Welcome to Team Coco Live's Moses and Friends. I am your host, Moses Storm. Tonight, we're partnering with HBO Max to talk to some of the comedians behind their new HBO Max specials. Uh, we're going to get an inside look. It's going to be a very fun show. You also notice that throughout the show, we're going to be enjoying some beverages provided by HBO Max. They actually sent me a fun little note. In lieu of payment, please accept alcohol. Okay. It's a very loose show. It's essentially like you're hanging out with comics all night backstage in the green room. Uh, to talk about her special, Horn Dog, we're going to bring on Rose Matafeo. Beth Stelling's going to be here with her special, Girl Daddy. And then the host of The Art of Comedy, it's another special, uh, Angela Johnson, is going to be here. Oh, but first, I'm going to bring on my friend Chris Red because Chris and I are in a pretty unique situation with our HBO Max specials where we're trying to figure out a way to shoot them. Because uh, we're, we're doing this show virtually, by the way. We're doing this show virtually because it's, uh, it's very dangerous to be in a comedy club right now. Especially for young people. I mean, you just never know what 40-year-old male comedian that looks 50 but dresses like he's 20 and dates like he's 15 could be hiding around any corner. Just like, oh, we didn't see you there, bud. Why are you dressed like a greasy magician? No, we're doing this show virtually because obviously a pandemic is just ripping through this country. The economy is in shambles. People are really hurting. And HBO thought, you know what would help people out right now? Another paid streaming service. What is HBO Max? Well, despite popular belief, HBO Max is not a line of feminine hygiene products. I know it gets confusing because there was HBO Max, HBO Go, HBO Family, HBO Plus Plus, Disney, Comcast, and The Sorcerer's Stone. If HBO starts another streaming service, Warner Media is gonna have to call Marie Kondua. HBO, which one of these gritty murder docs does not spark joy? No, I downloaded it. It's actually great. It's essentially HBO, but it has a lot more shows, comedy specials, and uh, just like original movies. It's, they have a lot. It's creepy. It's creepy how much HBO Max has. I mean, HBO Max even has hidden camera footage of me sleeping from 2009. Critics are calling that footage uh, already more engaging than season two of True Detective. The other new streaming service, new on the block, is Peacock, and they're revamping an old series. It's a, it's a variety show featuring comedians. It's called uh, To Catch a Predator. Peacock is like your aunt that gets out of rehab and promises that this time it's going to be different. I am not going to piss away my money. Oh, look, a Saved by the Bell reboot. No, go home, Aunt CISO. Can't do any more reboots. That's why HBO Max is here. They have so much new stuff coming your way. Speaking of, Chris and I are trying to tape our new one-hour specials with HBO Max. Uh, let's, let's bring Chris in. Chris. I am here. I have always been here. I do not leave. How far were you in the process of finishing your special before the whole shutdown happened? I was so close, man. I was like five jokes away from a full hour. Uh, and then they were like, hey, if you sneeze, you die, get in the house. And I was like, all right, damn, okay, cool. Yeah. And a lot of the jokes don't carry over. Like I had a joke that was like, black people don't get coronavirus, uh, which didn't age well at all. <laughs> I mean, my, my whole set was about how, you know, COVID is a hoax and it's gonna go away in April. Oh, so then that means that Trump just stole your material. So it's, it's, it's honestly comedies, comedies just gone to another level. Yeah, you and I were talking last night about even if we got the green light tomorrow, we would still need to tour before to essentially work out uh, the specials. Yeah. So maybe an outdoor show. Have you done anything that's like outdoor or virtual shows? Yeah, outside shows are cool, but I didn't I didn't feel good it, without a top hat turned upside down to collect money afterwards. No. Uh, that's what it feels like. It just feels like you're just yelling outside. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've looked at the outdoor shows where it's just like a guy yelling in a field. I can't do outdoor shows because the way I look, if I yell at people in a field, people think I'm just announcing the rules to an ultimate Frisbee game that's about to start. All right, no tag backs. We got double ups, no touches. This guy loves it. I can't perform in a field because you perform for free and working free in a field would not make my ancestors proud and set me back a lot. No, not the time for that. No. Nah. Not no. to move forward. This is cool. So a lot of people got sent uh, a little gift box from HBO Max. Yes, I did. Snacks, I think. Oh, this is cool. 
I, you know, HBO Max sent me one too, sort of a no hard feelings for all the HBO Max jokes. Very nice of them. I love it, man. Yo, I'm, I'm honestly very excited about this. They sent me a lot of cool stuff. They sent me two tickets, two tickets to nowhere. This is my first time getting two tickets to stay in Very exciting to have tickets to a mandatory work meeting. <laughs> oh, they sent me some uh, liquor. They sent me some ginger buck. Via yeah. Some- SVC, Ginger Buck, and some Matador Vodka. Ooh, everyone. Should, um, I don't know if they got my, I don't have the, I just have one for Loco in mine. Not oh, with hey. four full testosterone. I don't think these are legal. You shouldn't be doing that. Well, the, they got me, boom, my my baby, my favorite. Mwah, my bullet bourbon, and they got me a black label, Johnny Walker. They know how to treat a guy. Bottles. Uh, they just sent me a loose bag of vodka. Oh, I wouldn't drink that. Oh, I got a full bottle. It's not all. Oh, God. It is a piping hot, flat diet Mountain Dew left in a Kia Sorento. Mountain Dew is the only, only piss FDA approved to drink. That's dope. And did you get any snacks? I did. Uh, I was about to show you my uh, my organic grapes. I didn't even know you could send grapes in the mail. And they and they did mm, smell so grapey. Oh, I got snacks. I got Starburst. Oh, that's kind of dope. It's just yellow. It's just the worst one. Oh, that sounds... Hey, um, yellow's not terrible. It's just sheepish. I got hey, some skinny pop. They mm. sent me a leaking can of tuna. Oh, they don't like you, dog. I feel like they don't. Like you? Uh, they sent me a they, they sent me a DNA kit, just in case. They just sent me a bunch of squirrel DNA and parts. For what purpose? Oh no! Uh, yeah. Ooh, ooh, they sent me some AirPods. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, I'm not getting any. Oh, they did send me some Apple product. Oh, it's just 11 iPhone fours with 2020 software, so they don't work. Oh, but. But if you you know if you time travel, then you you'll be able to to talk to everybody in one specific year. They sent me an Emmy for no reason. I don't even deserve this. This is crazy. I, I didn't even package it up or nothing. This seems really mean. They just sent me a 2020 calendar and planner already filled out with nothing. Hey, at least you don't got to fill it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Send me Kindle so I can read books without owning them. Okay. Oh. They, they send me some fun packing paper. Yeah, it matches my pubis hair. Uh, my box is just lined with actual human hair. Who, whose hair is that? It says John Travolta, OJ FX. I don't know. Uh, man. Well, we know how your Hollywood career about to end. Oh, I spoke to you soon. They sent me an iPad. Uh, nope, it's an empty box. It just has True Detective season two in it. That explains the blood pocket. They just sent me those shoes that every white sitcom comedy writer wears. Oh, man. Those are going to be great for the live action version of Doug. They sent me J's, baby. Some fresh ass J's. And it, oh, and there's tickets to the NBA bubble. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Boy, this is dope. Oh, this make, they make my dreams come true. Thank you, HBO Max. <laughs> When, when's the game? Ooh, right now, I gotta go, man. Have fun with your little Zoom meeting or whatever, whatever the shit this is. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. Well, that was uh, Chris yeah. Red living everyone's dream. Comedy special coming soon, hopefully to HBO Max. Uh, I want to bring in my first guest. She's got a great special on HBO Max called Horn Dog. Please welcome Rose Matafeo. Rose, thank you so much for for being here and doing this. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Are you enjoying your uh, two cocktails? Yeah, I'm enjoying both my of mine great- at once. I've got my cocktail in a mug. Oh, look at that. Discreet. <laughs> Someone has struggled with alcoholism before. <laughs> I feel you. I, yeah, it's a mug. It wasn't a paper a bag before. Um, I it, it is 8 a.m. in New Zealand. Okay, great time for a ginger buck, they say. I, is it is it crazy? Is it like is it not okay to drink at 8 a.m.? I should be drinking. I, I think in quarantine rules, no, it's completely fine at any moment, I, at any time. I, I drank, I drank a lot in lockdown. <laughs> Let's be real. Absolutely. You're getting really close to the camera. I drank a lot. Yeah. I lived with my, um, my nan. I locked down with my 70, 76 year old, uh, grandmother. And, um, we, we got on it. We definitely got on it. We, um, we'd make a new cocktail every night. We had some, we had a spritz night, learn how to make 
martinis. We got steamed, actually. Yeah, it was great. This is great. This is what Good we energy. should all be doing. <laughs> it's a great energy. I mean, I think your Nan should be hosting this. I'm talking myself out of a job here. We'll get her, get her in, get her a, a, a <laughs> whole bottle of whatever she wants in a giant coffee mug. <laughs> I was watching your special, and one thing that really stood out to me is how present you were with the crowd during that special. I feel like a lot of times people are recording their special and like, okay, I'm immortalizing my dream. Everything needs to be word perfect. <laughs> and I can count at least 12 times where you stopped down and you addressed whatever was happening in that room. Mm-hmm. Is that something that you had planned on before? Is that a product of the festival? It's just, it's uh, very rare yeah. to see that. That's just, that's, yeah, I never really thought about that. That's, um, it's actually, I think it definitely is a product of the festival. Like before the shows in Edinburgh, or actually all of the shows, I play uh, ping pong. Um, like I play table tennis with the crowd before I'd start. And it's something I just started doing in Edinburgh. Like I did that for Horn Dog, and then the year before I would go around and make labels for everyone on my label maker yeah. uh, and meet the crowd. Sneakily, I think it's a way of like reminding that crowd that I'm a human being <laughs> and they're about to see an hour from a real person that wants you to love them. Um, but, you know, it, 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 and it breaks down some some type of barrier where it's like, it does break down something where it's like, this is a kind of um, uh, an exchange rather than me just talking at you. And right. I hope that comes across in your show. Uh, well, it's, I find so much trouble in naming things. How'd you come up with horn dog? It's kind of a happy accident. It's, um yeah, it's really hard to name things. I named it because I just thought it was a really funny name and word it was and it, and it came i think that you know when you come up with a name and then you kind of come up with the idea for the show oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> that kind of happened but it, it's so funny because it's like it was genuinely one of the it was the year that i was like oh, i'm just going to choose a stupid name and that would just be funny to do like a silly name uh and then that now has become the kind of title and i guess word and concept that has been incredibly linked to my career as a stand-up um i don't know as a reminder that stand-up is really stupid and silly and it can be yeah. and it can be silly as as well as you know meaningful but that those two things are just not they're not at the end of a uh, spectrum it's like it's all kind of intertwined and so you know uh, a show called that um um luckily winning a quite a an amazing award felt very funny <laughs> there's, there's like awards now that say horn dog on them on a, yeah, like, horn got, is huge I've, Literally, I've got it on. I've got it on this massive um, statue, and it's engraved. It's it's Rose McFair, horn dog. Yeah, uh, which is just it looks like it, it's calling me a horn dog, which is not un, completely untrue. But no, um, no, yeah. it's so prestigious. Right, you right. want it for being the horniest. Well, that's what I did like yeah. about your special too, because I think a lot of the festival shows can be very heavy handed and there's this pressure to have a theme. There's always that cadence you can tell when someone's trying to <laughs> heavily handedly end the show. And it's not even a smart sentence, but what they do is they slow down the voice (laughs) to let you know all they wrote. (laughs) I can't, I can't handle that. It might be my, my kind of me being from New Zealand and being so deeply self-deprecating that I could never take myself that seriously uh, to do that. I I don't know if it's that or just, um, yeah, I, 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 the confidence it takes to, believe that like what i'm saying is correct and yeah. important to but i mean like but to be fair i mean i i feel like all stand up is that so it's kind of you know ridiculous to kind of be like i'm not like that but you know it's it's I feel yeah like- it is a little bit of a cop out to just try to get those awards or trying to make it an award winning show of like you do yeah. this whole hour and then it's nothing just because you use that cadence that they use at M- npr to end Completely. The- I feel like you could say anything in that cadence and it would still yeah. sound, you could be like, milk, milk, lemonade. <laughs> Around the corner, fudge was made, made to black. And everyone's like, whoa, okay. Wow. That was huge. Let's put that whole oh. sentence on an award. I think I'm, I'm, I'm just lucky because I, I've, I mean, I've seen so many, so many other Canadian specials and kind of really tried to think about what would be the best um, to represent me, which turns out it was an incredibly garish backdrop, which I was like, I was watching it and I was like, geez, Rose. And then, and then part of me was like, that's exactly you and your style yeah. of personality, which is garish and over the top. Um, so, you know, don't lie you to know, yourself. The musical choices too. I feel like we would have been musical soulmates. Yeah. 
Oh, High school God. talking. Keen is in there. We Keen got Keen, like which we're going to fall, fall out. Fallout Boy. boy. Oh, my gosh. Are it's you still a, into that music? Trip. Heck, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I mean, I've got like a, I've, I feel like I've got a guilty, not guilty, but a uh, playlist of, you know, very much the Fallout Boys, the Panic of the Discos. Yes. Even a bit of Escape the Fate. Yeah. Mid-2000s the... emo rock, where oh it's just in hindsight, it's so insane. that Because I remember connecting with that as a kid, but now it's just mm. so weird to realize, like, oh, those guys were 30. Those guys were 30. And, like, incredibly, <laughs> like, deeply misogynistic. It's so funny. Yeah. Like, like um, there's, like, that metro station. Oh, no. Um, Curse of Curves. Who is that by? There's some, like... Um, I've been listening to like the actual lyrics of these songs and it's just a bunch of like, as you say, legit 30 year old men talking about how uh, like wily women are <laughs> and being like, yeah. they'll get you. <laughs> They're not the good guys in these songs, you know? And it's just like, you get caught up in the insane, like we were both 16 and you felt so right. <laughs> we've been all day. Like, wait, 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 wait. You're not over this 16 year old girl. That's half your life ago. <laughs> Well, I I miss I miss so much that style of singing. No one has ever read Chiffy Lube. I want those back there. Great pads from life. Do you take debit it. cards? But don't you find that there, there is like always an affectation, like a vocal uh, style that becomes popular? Like I feel like there's that kind of indie female singer songwriter one that's very popular now as well, which is kind of like speaking like you've got like a plum in your mouth, like. Like, oh, the, the, king, like it's like wide, like so. It's very. I do. Yeah. Why do you? Like it's. Yeah, it's it's more like a wide kind of. I, I, and then the voice wide. is cracky. Like oh, I didn't even yeah. try. <laughs> Rose doing a show at five a.m. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, so the, not only do you have an HBO Max special, which is a huge accomplishment, but you also have an HBO Max series, which yes. is huge. That's like every comic's goal. Can you tell us a little bit about the series? No, it's still in the works. Yeah, no, it's still in the works. It, it's, um, it's, it's called Starstruck. It's a, um, uh, uh, HBO Max and BBC got together and we're going to make this show. Um, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to be making it soon. Um, a character I play has like a one night stand with a very famous person. And um, I can't, I can't lie. Writing it was very, writing the pilot did feel like a creepy fan fiction. Everyone keeps asking if it's based on true events. And I'm like, I, w- I honestly wish. No, no, this is wish fulfilled. This is wish fulfillment. Is it a real celebrity that's that's in there, or is it like a placeholder celebrity? No, <laughs> well, no, we've got a we've got a very very good ta- very talented actor, but um, I think um, I think it probably would have hit close to home for yeah. a, to like an actual big celeb. Also, I feel like sometimes celebs are kind of bad at playing versions of themselves where they have to be like aware of the the nature of their life and job a bit so you know it, it's it's good to step away from that and kind of yeah you know it's based be on a that. real celebrity i can't yeah. wait to decode this uh, it's based on, a real based on, a based real, on julia roberts the special is called horn dog on hbo max and then you have a show coming out with hbo max too this is all very exciting i hope to talk to you again soon lovely to talk to you thanks moses thank you rose this is our two drink minimum presented by hbo max clink yes. Clank, Great to just clank. spill this all over my computer. Oh my gosh. <laughs> all right. Cheers. Thanks, Rose. See you, Emma. My next guest is a talented comedian who has both a critically acclaimed half hour special and album to her name already. Her long awaited debut hour special is called Girl Daddy. It's on HBO Max. Please welcome Beth Stelling. Hello, Beth. And it's Hello. Cheers to your special. Cheers. Right, drink special. I'm drinking the ginger buck. What do you got in your. What's it called? I'm having the, the, the it's other called one. the, the, the other Max one. Arita. Yeah. Out of a boot. And we need, these are branded drinks. I need you to say right to the camera, Max Arita boot, and take it to the max. And if you can make a <laughs> rev sound like an engine. Okay, okay. Max Arita to the max. Great. You sounded hammered. And Am I it's, hired? It's, it's perfect. It's exactly what we were looking for. <laughs> we love it. Uh, the Girl Daddy, we're here to talk about your special. 
Oh, yeah. And this got you interview. Welcome. Why why call it uh, Girl Daddy? I feel like I know a little bit just from watching the special. Yeah, I've been called a female comic so many times that if I have kids, I'm only answering to Girl Daddy. It's the only thing I'll answer to. Yeah, if we're going to go out of our way to feminize these titles. Yes. Then I'm going to be... Yeah. You know, it originated actually from my nephew. It's you're, something that he called my sister. Is Girl like, Daddy? Yeah, he's like, you're my Girl Daddy. And you're like, that's mine. And this kid gets no money. Yeah, and I'm like, look, I can't live my life without mining it for material. So yeah, what well, is a true thing that happens is is like I notice how often the show it doesn't even clear things up when they bring someone up as a female comedian. If anything, it brings the show to a grinding halt as the show <laughs> host stumbles all over it. Like, yeah, that's Jimmy. We have to catch out. Watch out for those raiders. All right, next. Co- oh God. We Tell got us. a female. Tell us, behave yourself. Women, get out of the room. Don't watch your cycles to link up. We got a female comic coming <laughs> to the stage. Like They're so baffled that someone with different parts is going to do the same job as I them. Can't, it's kind of one of those things where uh, I get. I don't know what to say. Like, we have to maybe stop talking about it. Like, how are we still having the conversation? Like, why would I still be getting asked the question, what's it like being a female comic? I feel like we're self-perpetuating at this point. Um, yeah, sorry, this is getting serious and we're looking for some yeah, real hot, like, quick bites. It's asked, but. so you have to think about it because it is asked in interviews and it's sometimes the only way to get to these articles is like comment on what it's like being a female comedian. Right. And it's like, we've been freaking doing it for a long time. When I was younger, I used to answer the question like, it's great. It's an advantage. I stand out on a lineup, blah, 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 blah. And then lately I've heard from some other female comics. Mm-hmm. that they don't appreciate that and that we should be talking about that it's more difficult or whatever it is or the problems with it. And it's like, uh, I don't know what it'll stop. Females have been killing. Oh, maybe I should have shut my door before this interview. Uh, no, you have movers coming in. You're being evicted from your apartment because <laughs> you're a comedian in 2020. So you're being currently evicted. Also, congrats on the special. Thank you so much. But the movers yeah, are going to be stalling your furniture in half. Yeah. That's While fine. we're doing this interview to promote the special, um, a lot of things are being repoed from me. Yeah. Is there someone else? No there? longer afford What's it. What's happening? <laughs> Should I shut my front door? The front Probably. door? Yeah. <laughs> shut the front door. Yeah. There's a <laughs> is, me. is this a bit? Shut the front door. Okay. Yeah. It's been shut. HBO Max is just like HBO, but it's very clean. <laughs> um, it's, it's HBO for Christians. So Wait a minute. A lot of succession is heavily edited. Somebody, somebody was like, when are we going to get a family-friendly HBO special? It's like, is that what they're known for? The HBO special genre? Family-friendly? Yeah. Well, this special's for the hoes and the dirty dogs out this there. This is a dirty special, folks. I'm thankful I got it in. Moses, I, I, I would be freaking out if I were you. I'm sorry I'm even drawing it. That's very to fair. It. I mean, but we were talking like, about that earlier. We have yet to tape our specials, and it's like, I don't know how. We're going to do it. I'd much rather be in your position. I was listening to sets before this to remember what life was before. Yeah, remember what stand-up was. And because I knew we were going to talk about the special, but I, I do feel so disconnected from it. But it, it gave me the memory of like, we are so lucky to do our jobs and be what they are. And I don't know if I really was thinking of it that way, but I'm listening and I'm like, this hour especially, I am, I worked really hard to even have the stage be close to the audience. I'm very connected to the audience. Um, I'm touching them at times. I mean, not like a lot. You put your fingers in people's mouths. It was really <laughs> weird. I mean, I want to I say super spreader, but you recorded this in February, <laughs> right before the shutdown. And also, yeah, well, just to finish this one thought, it is insane. Well, my special is not going to work. It's all talking about how come concerts are so crowded these days? <laughs> I'm always getting bumped. <laughs> But your special, it's very connected with the crowd. You have a great stage set up where you, it's like a comedy club where people are on each side of you. You're ready. You even talk to the audience. Do I have to pick? In the first <clears throat> four minutes, I, da- I, I have to pick someone that's going to kind of stay with me throughout, throughout the special. A oh, man. Yeah. I thought in this particular special, that man is Jeremy. But I had I'm many Jeremy. men throughout the tour that helped me. Wow. But I had to make that choice within like, you know, I come out, I'm looking at, you know how it goes. You, you, you see your crowd, you're looking at them, you're looking for the right guy oh, yeah. to pick. You almost have to pick someone who's not frightfully shy, but who looks gentler and a teeny shy because 
you want them to know that they are going to be in good hands. So many people hate sitting up front because they think they're going to get destroyed. Um, not my goal. At your show, absolutely. Look at this guy. <laughs> Look at your eyebrows. Too thick, my man. Well, weren't you sick right before? Oh, was my gosh. I, was, I think I got sick in Chicago in January. I must have picked something up. I was traveling and touring, you know, like three months straight um, in preparation. And okay. I got sick in January. Which and, is a dangerous time. Yeah. I like saying, yeah, I was just kicking around Iraq in 2004. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> you, that's, that's such a loaded answer. Very we were sick funny. in January. Yeah. Okay, super and, spreader. Exactly. And it felt like I couldn't get rid of it. And so, of course, I don't want to be one of those people who's like, I already had it. But I'm telling you, I got sick in January. I couldn't shake it. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to get it. <laughs> oh my god one. Oh, no. oh no 96 you're clear cheers to our true drink nice. minimum thank you 96 you're this is clear. official testing this is better than the testing that we already <laughs> have like maybe it's stress and travel of touring leading up to it and yeah. But I do like, I like to do vocal warm ups. I come from a musical family. And so okay. I was. <clears throat> well, your mom is a music teacher, right? That's right. So we always did some, we did classic warm ups. Did you want me to do it for you? Yes, please. I need some vocal warm ups. <laughs> Mommy made me mash my M&M's. Bum, bum. Mommy made me mash my M&M's. That was pretty good. Bum, bum. Daddy made me cry myself to sleep. Bum, Daddy bum. made me cry myself to sleep. You seem, uh, Sisters I, made ones? me, f- yeah. This, I took a, some liberties. Sisters made me feel real insecure. Bum, bum. Sisters made me feel real insecure. You know, may, most of the time it's like unique New Yorker. The last one fun. will really, I think, appeal to you. <clears throat> the first time I had sex was with a doll. Bum, first bum. time I had sex was with a doll. Doll. Be very personal to me and to you. <laughs> Are these not universal? I've never heard them. They sound uh, they sound legit though. And take it from the special, you have humped inanimate objects, so I guess the doll is coming from real life. Sometimes I would cheat on the couch with the edge of the bathtub. I was yes. a bit of a humper, I guess, here and there. It's something I've been open about um, because it was never no. described to you. No, no I think it. Yes. I don't know if you were ever taught. It depends on how your parents taught you sexuality. I know some parents discuss masturbation with their, with their kids. Um, I remember in my special, you'll remember that we had a health teacher that talked about teaching their sons how to masturbate, which I thought was illegal. But if I had been taught. You have to get ice cream after that. Can you? (laughs) That's that's such a weird. Mine was like very religious parents. It was very repressed. It was never going to get talked about. So I just knew like pieces from TV and then well, now Instagram, what, my own maybe. body was screaming. What, were your parents <laughs> repressed about it? Or was your mom like, that's yeah, fine? <clears throat> no, my mom never caught me. I think if she caught me humping the couch, maybe we'd have talked about it. But yeah. no, she never made me feel bad or guilt or anything. It was less, I think it was just more of a not totally discussed thing than you shouldn't be doing certain things. Yeah. How does your mom feel about your stand-up? Mm, we had a discussion about this recently, especially in regard to, to sex and talking about it. Because when I first started, I was very much like, uh, very aware of the stereotypes of female comics like that unfortunately still exist 13 years later, which are women only talk about sex. And so I was like, I'm not going to talk right. about sex. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to repeat jokes and I won't sleep with any comics. Um, those were my rules when I first started at 22. Yeah. You know, I kept those for a while. Um, but then I think you become a grown woman. And it's like, well, why can't I offer my perspective on this? It doesn't have to be some sort of exploitative graphic description of sex, but, um, I think it can only help to have more people's perspective on their experience. And my mom looks at it like, yeah, she, she doesn't love, bo- she calls it like body parts humor. Like oh she doesn't God. love cussing. She doesn't well, like love body parts. you talk about parts. your bathroom parts on stage. <laughs> <laughs> but I think she's also just like, you're a grown woman and um, some of this isn't going to be for me. 
All right, cheers, Thanks. Beth. Congratulations on the special. I, I mean it when I say it's, it's really great. I highly recommend it. Girl Daddy, HBO Max. Thank you, Beth, for joining us. Bye. Bye. In 2008, my next guest became an internet sensation and Mad TV cast member thanks to her viral nail salon routine. Since then, she's appeared on shows like Superstore, Ugly Betty, as well as Curb Your Enthusiasm, and released four one-hour specials already. On August 20th, you can see her hosting the Art of Comedy special, which was shot at the Ha Festival in San Antonio. Please welcome Angela Johnson. Angela, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. That was a mouthful. Sorry to give you every credit possible. All of it. You text me word (laughs) by word once. Um, how are how are you and your husband handling the the quarantine the whole lockdown? You know we're actually having a great time, which sometimes I I try not to tell everybody how much fun we're having because I know there's a lot of hurt happening in the world. So yeah. I like to be like I hate it, but really Ugh, love it so much. Um, I'm a homebody, love to be home, and we're getting creative. Like we all have celebrated birthdays in quarantine so far. Um, my husband's birthday is July. So we did Christmas in July because he okay. loves Christmas. We decorated, we put the Christmas tree out, all the decorations everywhere. And we did Christmas in July for like a good three weeks, almost the whole month. I feel like you could almost get away with it in the lockdown. We're at a point where every day feels the same. I couldn't tell you what the date is today. I feel like if I just saw Christmas decorations, I'd be like, well, I guess it's, it's Christmas now. Yeah. They're probably right. <laughs> They're probably right. Dang it. Yeah. Man, I missed that too. Shoot. That's why that's why they're drinking in the middle of the afternoon. Mm-hmm. Uh cheers. I'm drinking the ginger max. What do you got over there? It cheers, like same Z. In the same cup. Look at this. Yes. Um, I watched it last night, the the art of comedy, which is a cool way to set up comedy. Oh, thanks for watching it. Yeah, and, and you're the host of it. And I don't know, maybe you could tell me, maybe I'm wrong, but it looked like you were having a lot of fun. What was, what was your favorite part about shooting the special? Um, my favorite part about shooting the special with other comics is that there was other comics there because I'm used to being on the road by myself. It's me, my opener, my road manager, and that's it. And then we're on the road. And then when we come home, most comics will like go hit up the comedy store, the improv, Laugh Factory, whatever. A lot of times I just want to be home because like I said, I'm a homebody. I like that part. So I'll do like dinner with my friends or just stay home and watch Law & Order SVU in my own bed or my own couch and then pack and get back on the road again. So a lot of times I'm just with three people, my road manager and my opener and that's it. So my, one of my favorite parts was the camaraderie with the other comics and being backstage and then hanging out after having drinks after and like that whole thing. That was probably my favorite part was hanging out with everybody. I know what you mean. Cause when you get to your success level, you almost get a little isolated from what, it, when you start, when you're in the clubs with everyone every night or you're just grinding out, trying to get sets anywhere. When you get to your level, it's like, well, now you're just on the road and it's yeah. fun you're front of those people, but then the show's over. You have really no one to uh, decompress with and talk. And comics talk away. That is, I don't know, you can't be that mean to any other people like you can be mean to comics. They have a special <laughs> way. It's a nice language. Yeah, we have a special way. This special was a, a debut for one of my friends, Pedro Salinas, who I started out doing open mics with. No way, how cool. Yeah, yeah just like the worst rooms. We performed in a room that was a juice bar and the blender would start immediately. No. Uh, which is very exciting. It was cool to see him get his first TV set. Yeah. Do you remember your first set? Because it's a different experience than just doing a club. My first TV set was Premium Blend on Comedy Central years ago. And um, it was a bunch of comics. And then they would have like a headliner hosting it. Um, Jeff Dunham was my host. The puppet guy, um, yeah. Yes. And then... Um, on my episode was also a comic. She ended up falling off. You may not have heard of her. Amy Schumer. I don't know. Amy she didn't really Schumer. Do much after that. Does she run a crawfish room in deep San Diego? She used to. Yeah, she used yeah. to do that. I think I think she worked at Massage Envy now. I, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, that's huge. Whatever. That's a huge first taping. Yeah. And I like, I, I was, I was joking saying like our careers went at different paces, but you know what? It's fine. We're, we're all doing our own journey here. Okay. Well, one thing that, that stood out to me that I really appreciated is you get, you're hosting this thing. Not only did you get everyone's name, right? It's crucial, 
but you give really nice intros to everyone. We almost feel like you know the comic before they get up. So you don't have to do that extra step of digging yourself out and be like, here's who I am. That right. uh, I really appreciated the, the intros you gave. So thank you for doing that. And also, I'm sure you've gotten bad intros but, in your career. I mean, the worst intros. I've witnessed people get some real bad ones where it's like super cringeworthy. Yeah. Um, one time I was at the improv and, um, you know, it's one of those nights where just whoever goes up and somebody's hosting it. And the guy that was going up next, I forget who it was, but he was pretty famous, like more famous for acting than stand up. I remember, but it's like, you've seen him in like so many different movies yeah. type of guy. And whoever was hosting forgot his name. So he does that whole thing where he goes, this next comic, he needs no introduction. I mean, you've seen him everywhere. He doesn't even need an introduction. Just come on out here. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, Ugh! all of us are like, oh, he totally forgot his name. Clearly right vamping. This person, what a human being. What a guy that's, that's not just a guy. He's also, you know, a girl in a way. Everyone is everyone. <laughs> and what is the universe even? Like, oh, you're just, it's not going to come to you. Yeah. Yeah. Also, that type of intro, like you don't need an intro, like it better be the biggest person in the world. Sure. If you, you don't better... say he doesn't need an intro, please welcome Dave Chappelle, then it's like, oh, you forgot his bio then. Right. Right. The worst for me is corporate gigs. Okay. Why? This is why. Because here you are sitting in this like conference room of what should tech company, blah, 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 right? And so they're not used to introducing entertainers. That's not what they do. They just have like, you know, Susan from HR, who's going to read your bio, you know, and we're like at the club, we, we know like the last thing you hear is the comics name and then they come yeah. up. Right. And yeah. usually at a corporate gig, it's something like, and this performer, we're happy to bring up Angela Johnson. And then I start walking out and they go, she has been, and then they name everything I've ever done from the Snickers commercial when I was 23 to like what I did yesterday. And then after like a good 10 minute intro, then they're like, come on out. So you're at this point already on the stage. You're like, well, I heard my name and that's when we know to go up. And yeah. then you have to hear whatever Wikipedia thing they downloaded. Sure, 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 sure. I remember I got brought up once for like, and from the contra, it was like my name first, and I'm already on stage, just like hunched over in the dark. And then it was like from the controversial Burger King commercial. Here he is. It's like, okay, well, I didn't like do anything with the burgers. It was like a different reason. I, didn't I was pay. like, there's a controversial Burger King commercial? Wait a minute. I guess it set off everyone's like home assistant, Alexa or Siri or something. And it made sense. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, it was like on purpose. And mm. then um, for some reason that made it into the stage intro. And that was, and it's a college campus. So like, wait, controversy? What did he do? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who'd he sleep with? What? What did he do? He slept with one of the burgers, which I would put it past men. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In this special the art of comedy, uh, some of the comics perform on a riverboat, which is mm -hmm. kind of pitches us like hell gig, because it's like outdoor, right. on a boat, it's tourist. But I don't know, the longer I don't perform on stage, it was weird watching it, because I'm like, I think I'd do that gig now. <laughs> that was a cool call out in this special. Who doesn't know, uh, Eva uh, Longoria is, makes an appearance yeah. in a special to, uh, to introduce. It was cool to be a part of something with her like this and honestly to acknowledge like our culture you know what i mean like yeah. to acknowledge that there are funny latino people funny like we're really talented and let's highlight some of us like that that was an honor to do because a lot of time i mean like we're we're making fun like diversity matters though and so yeah that's why I was really super honored to be a part of this special and hosting it because I want to see our stories told and, you know, like we deserve that. They're great stories. Yeah, it was a really cool way that HBO Max framed it and that it's the art of comedy and it's not billed as these shows where you get to feature these people that are just have interesting points of views and kind of the fact that they're Latin or, or Spanish has really nothing to do with just that they're good at stand up. Because a lot of times when you first yeah. start your career, it's like, well, we need a separate night for all the Latin people. It's oh, spicy know. Saturdays. Oh, I did refried Fridays for many years. <laughs> Nothing feels better than, than getting a check that says refried Fridays on it. 
just from my name alone, uh, it doesn't seem like just a bland white guy name. I would get put on Chocolate Sundays. Really? Uh, Urban Show. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Two of them. Name alone. I think I did it like once or twice, Chocolate Sundays. Angela, this was so much fun talking to you. Thank you so much for doing the show. You're so funny. And it's really special that I got to be on this with you. So thank you for having me. Art of Comedy is the special. And uh, cheers. Cheers. I would like to thank all of my guests, Rose Matt DeFeo, Beth Stelling, Angela Johnson, whose specials are all part of the Summer Comedy Festival on HBO Max. Hopefully you'll find specials from Chris Red and I up there at some point. And then there's two specials that are hosted by my boss and guy holding the ring light, Conan O'Brien. Thank you for joining us for Team Coco Live's Moses and Friends. Good night.